Hi everybody, my name is Andy and welcome to my office in Los Altos, California. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in California as well as New York. In this video, I'm going to go over the California rules of professional conduct for attorneys. Uh, now, unless you're an attorney yourself or you are a law student uh, right now, uh, or I suppose unless you're married to an attorney or married to a law student, uh, you probably have never heard of the rules of professional conduct before. Uh, so let me explain. Uh, there are actually a couple ways to think of this, I think. Uh, the most linear, kind of most straightforward way is that the rules of professional conduct are a set of basic rules of um, you know, go governing behavior, I guess, that all lawyers know simply because they are attorneys. Uh, so this is, you know, without regard to whatever specialty, w without regard to whatever expertise a particular lawyer might have, all lawyers know the rules of professional conduct simply because they are attorneys. Um, I guess think of it like this as well. If you've ever been to court uh, and you see lawyers kind of arguing their case in California, uh, th those lawyers have a certain um, specific skill set, I guess. Like they know rules that are specific to the courtroom about things like, you know, what to say, when to say it, uh, what paperwork to file, when to file it, etc. cetera. Uh, that skill set is, is not something that every lawyer has simply because they are an attorney. Um, the rules of professional conduct again, are things that all lawyers know simply because they are lawyers. Uh, you can also think of it this way, I guess. If you've ever seen lawyers on TV, uh, you know, like on TV shows or, you know, um, in the movies or something, there are certain stereotypes, I think, that all lawyers tend to fall into. Uh, some of them true, some of them not. Um, the, the ones that are not true, for example, would be like, you know, all lawyers wear suits and ties. Um, all lawyers have that big wall in the office, I guess, of law books where they're like, you know, bound in leather and they have like gold stenciling on them, etc. Uh, not every lawyer has, you know, that. Um, there are certain stereotypes, though, that I think are, are true. Uh, and one of them, I think, is that, you know, the rules of professional, or I guess, let me phrase it more generally. Uh, there are certain rules that all lawyers know simply because they are lawyers. So the thing is, lawyers are kind of similar in that way. Um, yeah. So anyway, like regardless of how you think of it, the rules of professional conduct basically are a set of rules uh, governing what lawyers can and can't do, uh, and you know those rules are basically known to all lawyers. You know they bind all lawyers simply because they are lawyers in California. Uh, yeah. So hopefully that made sense. The rules of professional conduct themselves uh, actually are put out by the California State Bar, and they are available online for free. So uh, down in the description below, I'm going to go ahead and link uh, the uh, website uh, run by the California State Bar that has the rules of professional conduct on them. Uh, now, I, I guess this might sound a little weird, but I would encourage you to actually go and read uh, the rules of professional conduct uh, for two reasons. Number one is that the rules themselves are um, written in plain English, I guess. Uh, so the thing is, like, you know, most people, when they read contracts or when they read statutes and stuff, there's a certain density, like, you know, the words are very big and, like, you know, the sentences run on forever and stuff. So reading legal documents is not something that everybody can do. Um, the rules of professional conduct do not read that way. Uh, they're actually very easy to read. Um, not sure if the subject matter will be necessarily interesting to you, but uh, if you can, like, if you want to, I would certainly recommend that you go at least look at the rules of professional conduct. You might be surprised at how um, easy they are to read. The second thing is that uh, the rules of professional conduct, you would think there would be tons of them, like hundreds or thousands or something. Um, there's really not that many. Uh, it's, I mean, there's not, I mean, there's, there's quite a few, but there's not a humongous number, I guess. Um, and they, they're, they're organized in a fairly kind of easy to navigate sort of way. Uh, yeah. So I guess if you can follow all of that, I guess, you know, my explanation for all that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and illustrate the point about the rules of professional conduct, about what they cover, the extent of what they cover, uh, by going over three of them in particular. So the first rule we're going to go over is Rule 3-700D, uh, and specifically we're going to go over D1 and D2. Uh, and that, those rules basically say that when a attorney-client relationship ends, you know, when the representation ends, the attorney is supposed to return promptly all the client's files, all the client's paperwork, uh, that's rule D1, and all the client's unused trust account money, that's uh, rule D2. Uh, and the reason why that rule is important, I guess the reason that's, you know, the reason why I made this video is that I often see the situation where, you know, the client in a you know, situation like that says, 
well, you know, I, I let my lawyer go because I couldn't afford him, or I let my lawyer go because I didn't like how she was handling the case. I found another lawyer, but this first lawyer won't return my paperwork to me. Uh, and the second lawyer can't do anything because he, he really needs to see the paperwork. What am I supposed to do? I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, and I'm very um, surprised, I guess is the best word, that that happens as often as I see it. Uh, because, you know, like I said, 3-700 D1 and D2 explicitly say that when a representation ends, the prior attorney has to return documents, has to return files, has to return trust account money uh, in a very prompt manner. Uh, and I think suffice it to say, not every lawyer does that. Um, yeah, so the second rule I'm going to go over is 5-320E. Uh, and this rule will probably make sense, uh, make a lot of sense to you if you've ever been on jury duty before. Uh, and the rule basically says that if you're a lawyer, you are generally forbidden from uh, contact with a juror, even if it's on a case that you are not on. Uh, so kind of the practical kind of day-to-day you know, -day version of this is that if you are a lawyer, generally do not talk to jurors, period. Uh, and the reason why I think this might make sense to you if you've ever had jury duty before is, um, I'm not sure how they do it in other states, but in this part of California, what they do when you have jury duty is they give you this little green tag, uh, it just says juror on it, and you clip it to your shirt, and, you basically, and they basically tell you, uh, to, you know, to wear that tag all the time when you're on jury duty. The reason you have to wear that tag is that it basically marks you, for lack of a better word. It marks you so that all the lawyers kind of, you know, roaming around the courthouse or just kind of walking back and forth and stuff, when they see you, they know you're a juror and they will purposely not talk to you. Um, yeah, so that's what 5-320E uh, says. The last rule, rule number three that I'm going to go over is Rule of Professional Conduct 2-100. Uh, and it, that rule basically says that if you are an attorney in California, you are generally forbidden from communicating with the party that you know to be represented. Uh, what does that mean? So what that basically means is that if you are on a case and the person on the other side of that case, like if you're the plaintiff, you know, the defendant, for example, uh, has a lawyer, then you as the plaintiff's lawyer are not allowed to communicate with the defendant directly. You must communicate with the defendant's lawyer instead. Uh, so that is, um, I guess, the, the way that that pops up the most, I guess, is that if you are a lawyer, or sorry, let me back that up, if you are the unrepresented party on the other side, and the other side's lawyer contacts you, what the, that lawyer should generally ask at the beginning is, hi, do you have an attorney? Are you represented? Uh, and the reason they ask that is so that they know, can I talk to you directly, or do I have to go through your attorney? Um, yeah. So I guess uh, those rules that I went over, 2-100, 5-320E, and 3-700, D1 and D2, um, I just picked those at random. Those are the ones I think are um, the most common, I suppose, uh, the ones that kind of pop up the most. Um, there are a lot of other rules. Go ahead and take a look at the website down below, and you should hopefully get a full flavor of what the rules of professional conduct uh, cover. Uh, so hopefully all of that made sense. Uh, I don't mean to make this video confusing, but the rules of professional conduct, I think, uh, because they have that consumer protection kind of, you know, uh, angle to them, are important for, I think, the general public to be aware of. Uh, in my opinion, I think 3-700 D1 and D2 probably would be very, very helpful to a lot of people uh, kind of throughout California who are dealing with lawyers who they have uh, terminated but will not return documents to them. Um, yeah. So... Uh, again, hopefully all that made sense. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, comment, etc. And I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks.